Our shed is sinking, and it needs to be repaired. That's the short version of this story, but there's a little bit more to it than that. We knew that it was going to need some repair when we moved it. Um, here are some photos of us moving the shed. We moved it about two miles from my father's house right before we started building our house. And we knew that we needed to have some temporary power while we were building the house. And we thought this shed would be an excellent opportunity to run a temporary panel and have electricity while we were building. It took me a couple days to move it, but I noticed that there was some damage to it. Now just a little background. Um, my dad moved this shed out to his property from in town um, roughly 25 years ago when he built his house. And he actually lived in it for six months while he was building his house. So while my sister and I would come and visit, we would stay in the shed for that period of time that he was living in it. Um, so the shed itself is roughly 40 years old, and it is showing its age. I knew that there was some damage to it um, before we started moving it, and I kind of fixed things to the point where it was going to be movable and, you know, hopefully not fall apart during the short trip over to our property, but um, I, I knew that there was going to be some ongoing issues with it. The joists were rotten, um, the foundation that it was on at my dad's house had kind of sunk into the ground, so the joists were rotten, the floor was rotten, the bottom of the siding was rotten, the sill plates were completely gone. Um, structurally, it had a lot of issues. So we knew that there was going to be some work to be done. And the catalyst for doing the work now is I need a place to do some projects over the winter time. Last winter, I didn't get anything really accomplished because I didn't have anywhere to work. Um, I still have to build a sewing cabinet. We've still got to do some shelving in the bathroom. Um, I'd like to do some end tables around the couch and probably a desk inside too. So I'm hoping to do some of these projects over the winter time and I wanted to have uh, an enclosed space so that I could have heat and uh, be a little bit more comfortable. So that was again the catalyst for doing the work now. Um, as we got started here working on the shed, I thought it would be, you know, some minor repairs here and there. But as we dug into it, we were able to find the full extent of the damage. So the first thing I had to do was repair the foundation. And that was my own doing because, like I said, I had just put it on cinder blocks. And those cinder blocks had sunk into the ground. And to complicate this further, um, we had an issue with our electric. Initially, we were going to run our panel to the shed, like I, like I said. And then once the house was built, we're going to move the electric service over to the house. Well, when I went to do so, it ended up being about 30 feet too short. So, I kept the panel in the shed, I ran a feed-through panel, and then I ran that to the house. So, long story short, the electric is not able to be disconnected from the shed. It's, that's what feeds our house. Now, that was a problem, and it got a little tricky when we were jacking the shed and, and moving it around and lifting and all sorts of things but I'm limited in my ability to really raise it out of the way ideally I wanted to put um, concrete piers underneath the shed um, to really give it a firm foundation but I didn't have a way to dig underneath it and there are electric service um, lines coming in up underneath the shed so I didn't really want to be digging so the kind of the compromise that I made is that I was going to put it on 
deck blocks and put uh, pea gravel underneath that. So the pea gravel is really good. It disperses the weight and it kind of spreads it around. In my area we have predominantly clay and so when I was placing the blocks I didn't remove too much of the topsoil because anything, any of the gravel that's in the clay, the weight's just going to drive it into the clay and it's going to sink again. The topsoil kind of helps to keep it together so that way it doesn't get driven into the clay. At least that's the idea. We'll see how well that actually works. But by raising portions of the shed, I was able to place uh, six by six treated timbers underneath running the span of the shed. I should mention it's an eight by 12 shed. So not a huge amount of space, but I think it'll be at least a good start until we build the barn. One of the things that took the most amount of time was just being overly cautious. Um, on this back wall, which faces north, you'll see later when I remove some of the siding, but that entire sill is gone. Um, it's all rotten, and there's nothing really supporting any of the studs on that side. And that is a load-bearing wall, so my concern was that as I started lifting portions of the shed, the whole thing would just kind of explode or implode and just kind of fall apart. So I was just trying to lift carefully small portions at a time and then kind of re repair and replace the damage as I went. And in doing so, I was able to also correct some of the temporary repairs that I made initially. And so it's, it's a lot more structurally sound. Some of the repairs that I made originally um, instead of repairing the front rim joist I just cut it in half and spliced in a, a section of rim joist and so I was able to repair that whole rim joist all together here you can see kind of the extent that was my north facing sill plate um, that back joist that back rim joist the north side there I had already replaced that before we moved the shed because that rim joist was gone and so that was the section that was in the ground the most and it did a considerable amount of damage to both the rim joist, the joists, the sill, and the floor in that area of the shed. So all of that's going to have to get replaced and throughout this video I'll just kind of mention things as necessary but it's pretty much just tearing out the bad and replacing with good um, these are two by eight joists so they can span nine feet and I would have been better off placing a third six by six timber down the center of the span but they span seven feet so it's acceptable but not ideal I just didn't have a good way of getting another row of deck blocks and leveling out another 6x6 six six timber down the center of the span because I there wasn't enough room for me to get underneath the shed and like I said before I just really couldn't raise it any higher because of the electric service line coming in. I found that this high lift jack worked awesome for this uh, project I was able to lift either side um, with just a cinder block supporting underneath it and that was enough to keep it from driving into the ground. One problem that I did run into is that when I was raising or putting a load on the jack at some parts it would bind and then so it, it wouldn't reach the next notch for the pin to drive into and I found that a simple fix to that was just spraying some WD-40 along the the length of the jack itself and that really lubricated it. It's kind of amazing how just a little bit of debris in there can prevent the jack from functioning. So after the uh, 6x6 timbers were placed I just put these, uh, uh, I guess you would call them similar to a, a rim joist but they're really just to hold the 6x6 timbers square so that way they don't get uh, moved out of out of the same plane. I'm 
once the exterior and the foundation had been kind of resolved and I felt a little bit more comfortable being inside the shed, I was able to start uh, tearing things apart. And it was kind of interesting to see the extent of the damage, for one thing. Um, I was a little surprised how well the shed stayed together over the past, I think, two years now since we moved it. Um, just simply due to the fact that there was very little structural components remaining. Um, I already mentioned the damage, but kind of once I was able to start tearing apart the inside, I was able to see a lot more of the, the problems and the issues. And uh, the insulation, that was a, a treat to tear out too. I think at one point, there's probably a few mice that lived in there because um, a few of the walls were probably 80% of the insulation was sunflower seeds. So, not quite sure what the R value of sunflower seeds is, but I decided I was going to remove all that and replace all of the insulation. So on the interior here, you can kind of get an idea of the living conditions that my father had. And you'll see three little lofts, um, one for each of us. So we had our own little sleeping area. And this shed was um, ran with electricity, so there are outlets. Um, I'm going to be replacing all of it just due to the age and uh, just to kind of set it up so it fits my needs a little bit better um, for the upcoming shop that it's going to become. But he did have electricity in the shed, so we were able to cook and he had heat in there. I think he lived in there from about March until November while he was building his house. Um, so just to get it to uh, the point where you could have a livable space inside the house, I think it took him about six months. Once the, the shed foundation was a little bit uh, more solid, I was more comfortable tearing off that facing rim joist on the south side. Um, I didn't want to do too much structurally until I knew that at least the foundation was solid. Um, I just this whole project, this whole I just had nightmares of it falling apart and you know cutting the wrong thing at the wrong time or pulling the the wrong structural component out at the wrong time and the whole thing coming down. So um, I just I was trying to do my best to do it in pieces and get things solid and secure before I remove the next component. And once the south facing rim joist was repaired and replaced, then I was able to start working on the floor. Um, I wanted to repair the floor due to the rod, but I also I hemmed and hawed about whether or not I should just replace the sections that were rotten. And ultimately I decided to tear off the whole floor because I wanted to insulate underneath it in the joy space. Um, in my climate, it gets pretty cold in the winter time. And I figured that if I was going to go through this amount of work to repair the shed, I should try to make it as comfortable as I can. So that way, I don't really have any excuses not to use it in the winter time. So I did tear off all the floor. Um, I, I put down some lath underneath the joists. And then I supported, I used that to support one inch foil faced um, foam boards for some radiant thermal protection. And then I spray foamed all of the joy space cavities uh, around, this, around the foam board. And then I filled in the remainder of the cavity with loose fill cellulose insulation. So I'm not sure what the overall R value is, but it's better than zero, I know that. So hopefully that makes a difference come this winter time. And then I just put down three quarter inch tongue and groove subfloor plywood on top of that. I think eventually once we get our sawmill, I might put down some actual hardwood flooring, but I'm not gonna make a priority of that at this point. 
I just wanted to get the insulation in, get the floor in, so that way, I mean, mind you, this whole time, the body of the shed is floating, supported in the air by the jack and not really much else, so I kind of wanted to get the floor in as soon as I could, and then get the new sills in and, and have it all secure, so. After the installation was done, I threw the plywood in, and then I was able to work on the sills. And at this point, things really kind of got um, a little bit quicker because I was able to focus 100% on building instead of demolishing rotten things and tearing things out and then trying to build on top of that. So. There's only a few minutes left here in this video. Um, really, once I buttoned up the cells and I got the body of the shed reattached to the floor, I just kind of want to end it here. It's going to be a couple videos in this series just as I go through and build this shop. Um, so I didn't want to make it too long, and I figured this was a good natural place to break it. In the next video, I'm going to be working on the exterior and replacing all of the siding. Um, so I'll get that uploaded as soon as I can. But I wanted to thank you guys for sticking around this whole video. And hopefully you, you'll be interested in watching the rest of this series as I go through and build a shop to do some more work this winter. If you have any questions or comments on this video, please leave me a note in the comment section below. And if you haven't already subscribed, I'd encourage you to do so as we have some cool projects coming up this winter once I get the shop finished. Otherwise, thanks for watching.